Welcome to Dancing Moon Songcast. I'm Scott Simpson, casting from Dancing Moon Studio in Spearfish Canyon, on the north end of the Black Hills of South Dakota, right on the banks of the Spearfish Creek. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free PDF from my lyric book from scottsimpsonmusic.com forward slash lyrics. And of course, you can find links to all my music there as well. So let's get casting and find out what song we're going to talk about this time. Well, this is our uh, third episode in our series, 12-part series, 12-week series, focused on songs from Keys to My Head. And um, today we're going to listen to and talk about a song called 1987, a very good year, I might say. So we'll give a listen to 1987, talk a little bit about it on the other side.
So that was 1987, um, which, uh, as I mentioned in uh, some of our previous episodes, um, on this album, um, a number of the songs, eight to be exact, were written uh, based on prompts from uh, FOM in 2020, which is February Album Writing Month, an online community that shares prompts and all of that stuff. Actually, just right around the corner, I, I suppose it's going to start again in 2021. haven't decided yet uh, whether I've got the uh, energy and time to, to jump in. Uh, but this one was uh, written on the, uh, the Wonderlust uh, theme. And, um, and so, you know, when you write multiple songs on the same theme, uh, then one of the things you're looking for is, is, uh, how do I, how do I connect with that theme, but in a different way than I did in the last one that I wrote? Uh, cause you know, you're really writing, uh, um, the, the goal is to write 14 songs. And so you're really in a way writing a song every other day. Um, if you, if you make it to 14. Um, so this one was Wanderlust, but I thought about what's the, the most memorable, um, amazing road trip that I've taken. And, uh, and that's what this song is about. 1987 is about, I, I was married in 1987. We got married in, uh, in July, uh, July 25th, and we, uh, on the budget that we had, we took a, uh, a road trip honeymoon, which was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, it was also affordable. I um, mean, it was no f- flight to Cabo, but, um, but, but I would highly recommend it because it was, it, it was just like every moment of the day um, was a new adventure. And, uh, and so that's what the song is about. I, I, um, I wrote the song on, uh, on my uh, tenor ook. It's an eight string. And uh, so once again, as I had mentioned in this album, I, I really wanted uh, nylon strings as the key centerpiece of every, every song. And so that meant either uh, classical, classical guitar with nylon strings or the ukulele. So... This one was an ook song. So we'll take a look at the uh, at the lyrics, talk a little bit about that, and uh, and then uh, talk a little bit about the music. 1987. Sky is blue as ocean. Summer clouds are sailing by. Black-eyed Susans on the shoulder sway and dance, but never cry, they never cry. So I, I really began with just images that were very vivid in my mind. The big, broad sky. We, tri- we took a road trip. We were married in Iowa. We drove across Nebraska, Great Plains. We drove um, through uh, parts of um, Wyoming um, into Colorado through a number of places in Colorado and then down into New Mexico before heading back home. Um, And home would have been then, uh, I believe, back to Texas at that time. Um, So big, wide, blue summer sky and clouds. And... It's remarkable. I don't know if you've, uh, you know, there are black-eyed Susans. It seems like on that trip, and I don't know that I've ever been on a trip that I saw more than I saw then. But for some reason that year, um, there were just black-eyed Susans everywhere. And we would just, we would talk about them. We would notice them. Um, and um, and so they seemed to be um, a key piece of our honeymoon in some way, at least in my mind as I think about the images. Um, and Black Eyed Susan always seemed like a, you know, you think about a black eye and 
and there's a there's a there's a hint of violence in the name of the black eyed Susan, um, and yet and yet there's nothing violent about them. They're beautiful. They're lovely. They're sunny. They're they're um, prolific. They're everywhere. Um, and so, uh, you know, in that bright yellow with a with a with a stark black center, um, and so we 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 had the swaying and the dancing. The black eyed Susan seemed to be very happy, uh, and not crying at all, and they seemed to be celebrating and welcoming us, and uh, and so that was that was a lovely piece. So the next section, which is really the refrain or the chorus, setting out is all too easy. You think a map is all you need. But then the road is closed and the weather turns. We will arrive. Just wait and see. And I talked, uh, I guess this, this album is, has a lot to do with relationship and marriage. Because I talked a lot about that in the, in the last episode, I think. But... Uh, but this was a; these were the days. Nineteen eighty-seven were the days, certainly before GPS. And so that what that meant was uh, a big map that you're that you're looking at. Because we were going places that we we vaguely knew, but we didn't know the exact route that we were taking, and we didn't know exactly how long it was going to take, and we didn't have it all just planned out perfectly, which was good. And that that's part of the enjoyment of 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 that kind of a road trip just kind of taken off and, and having the flexibility to add an extra day or to, you know, deviate a little bit from what you thought you'd do. Um, but, you know, we set out um, with the map and then you find, um, as you do, when you don't have a, you know, GPS and that, that gets updates about road closings and things like that, or when you don't have a, a, a cell phone even, that uh, is giving you constant uh, weather updates. You, you, you know, you've got the radio, if you're listening to the radio. We, on the other hand, weren't, weren't, weren't listening to the radio. Too. We were listening to cassettes, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, but you get that surprise of, oh, this road is closed. Okay, well, let's pull out the map and figure out the other route. Or, oh... Uh, there's a pretty nasty storm coming on. Maybe we ought to pull over for a little while, you know, so we don't run into, you know, some just a downpour or, or you know, or late summer hail or, you know, something like that. Um, but I think in in a bigger way, it's it's about setting out there at the beginning of, a, of, of your life, but also at the beginning of a relationship, of a, the beginning of a marriage, and saying, you know, we, we've picked up the map as much as we can. You know, we, we talked to people. We, 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 we even, I think, did some marriage counseling. And, we, you know, we both thought we looked at the map a lot about what, what's supposed to happen when you start a family and all that. But, of course, you have to know that the road, some roads are going to be closed and the weather's going to get nasty, and you're going to have to make different plans, take a different route. But that assurance, oh, it's okay. We'll arrive. And I wonder kind of sometimes today, if you took um, young people and you took the cell phone with internet connection out of their hands and you took away the GPS and you put them in a car... And you said, go out there across, across the, the great wide open. Would the, would the fear of doing that be overwhelming? I mean, when I think about it, I mean, I don't do that now. I don't go places without my cell phone. You know, I might have a problem. I might have an emergency. I might need to call. I might need to get directions. I might need to look. But... We used to do that all the time, and it wasn't a big deal. We, we knew we had a map. You know, we knew pretty much where we were going to be. I think you got to start out a marriage like that. You know, you got to say, hey, 
we, we know some things, but we know also that there's going to be some things that we, we didn't anticipate, but it's not going to kill us. It's going to be okay. We'll make it. Having kids is that way too, you know. You, you feel like, you, boy, these kids, these children, they come without instructions. My gosh, what am I supposed to do? Well, you know what? At some level, it's written in your genetics. Now, I realize that there are um, folks, human beings, who, don't, who are not good, do not do a good job of parenting. And I understand that. And I'm not suggesting that we ought to forget any, any advice on parenting. But I think some of the best advice is to trust your gut, to trust your heart, to trust the good people that you've known who have done good things for you as you set off and know that, that you've got some guides built in. Now, call me crazy, but... So move on to the next, uh, next verse. A log cabin near the Great Divide... Your hair loose in the breeze. Water falls into a lake hung high. There we were, just 23. Just 23. So really, once again, very, very specific things. There was a log cabin that was in disrepair that was right on the Great Divide. We were were driving through uh, Colorado going over Oh, I don't recall which pass it was, but right up there, there was this there was this old, old log cabin. And of course, in Colorado, as well as many of the states, um, it's that way in South Dakota and Wyoming, I think. If there's, a, if there's an older, a very, a very old, original sort of log cabin, uh, you, you don't get to tear that down. You, 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 you have to leave it. Now, they could be falling apart. They could be in disrepair and just kind of tumbling, but you don't, you don't, because they're designated, many of them, as historic, you don't, you don't tear them down. You let them, you let them age and collapse gracefully so people can go by and enjoy them the way we did because we, I have pictures um, of us there at the log cabin and, and Cheryl standing in the door of the log cabin and and, and her hair going all over the place because it was windy up there on the path, on the pass. And it was just, just a beautiful, beautiful picture. Just sunny times. Wonderful at the, at the beginning of, of, of something that now is, um, has, has aged with grace, with richness. But that was right there at the beginning. Water falls into a lake hung high. We went to, we actually did a hike up to Hanging Lake uh, in Colorado, and uh, and we and we stood in the waterfall, and we have lots of pictures from that, so I can revisit that. Twenty twenty three. We were we were almost twenty three actually, closing in on twenty three. Both of us. And we get back to the chorus. Setting out is all too easy. You think a map is all you need, but then the road is closed and the weather turns. We will arrive. Just wait and see. So uh, one of the things I'm doing here with the writing is, is with this refrain, with this chorus, is setting up something. We will arrive. Just wait and see. We will arrive. Just wait and see. We've had it twice now. So we get to the next, uh, the final verse. Windows down the buzzing desert. Your bare feet, your mirrored shades. Singing every track on Joshua Tree. We set our course with a serenade. What a serenade. Of course, if you're a U2 fan, you know that 1987 was when uh, Joshua Tree came out. What an amazing album. Incredible and so we had that on cassette. And I should mention, once again, I haven't mentioned it yet, with the, the song, all of the songs on this album begin with a sound. The sound at the beginning of 1987, as you, as you heard, is that sound we heard over and over again. The rewinding of a cassette back to the beginning and then pushing play. Rewind play it over again, rewind, play it over again, or, or flip the cassette. 
I, we may have had an automated, it may have, it may have automatically flipped to the other side. I don't remember. I remember a number of cassette players in cars that I've had at, at various levels of, of value and, and technology. Uh, none of them very high technology or really great quality, but, uh, Joshua Tree. That was what we listened to that whole that whole honeymoon, and uh, and I recall driving across, particularly New Mexico, and Cheryl's. Uh, the, it was hot out. We were in Cheryl's Dodge O two four, and she had her window down. I was driving, and she had her feet stuck out, and she had her shades on. And we were listening to Joshua Tree. It's just, uh, you know, everybody has some of those things. Some of those moments, memories, that are, those sense memories that include sound, smell, feel, color, image, all of it. Shared with another person that you're still with. Which takes us to the final chorus. Setting out, it seems so easy. You, you think a map is all you need. But then the road is closed and the weather turns. We have arrived, don't you see? We own this road, you and me, yeah. It goes on as far as I can see. So I'm sure and in the writing of this, I was influenced um, a little bit by the other song that I wrote that got me started thinking about life as a tra as a journey as a being on the road with somebody and being okay with that being okay with not knowing exactly what arriving means being there with that person in that setting with that music with the sun and the black eyed susans and the feet out the window and the sunglasses, the shades, um, that's arriving. And now all the other things that are arriving, all the things that we share, all the little things that we have in common that are our stuff, you know, our dogs, our shows on TV, our, the, the, the food, the, the meals that we eat together. The, the people that we know, the things we talk about, all of those things are like the details of this song. And this song really is just a detail song. It's just a, a pile up of, of little images from that trip, from my honeymoon. And, uh, so it's nice to pull that out and revisit. So just to talk a little bit about the music, uh, um, I, I did write it and record it uh, for FOM on, on, uh, on the ukulele, uh, eight-string ukulele, which, which I, I'm particularly fond of, more so than the four-string. It has that broader, um, wider sound. Um, and that, that little slide up that goes... Uh, dum, 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 little slide, the uh, uh, hammer and slide on that. Um, I, I loved that, and I, I remember playing around with it for a long time, playing around with it, playing around with it, saying, I gotta do something with that for FOM, I gotta do something with that for FOM. And so then I sat down and thought, Wanderlust, what's my favorite trip? And then, and then just started spilling out the images and details. Um, so I don't know if this is the kind of song that everybody wants to listen to. You know, the details, if you connect, for instance, with Joshua Tree, if that's meaningful, then that's, there's a connection point. If you connect with being on the road, with sticking your feet out the window, with, um, you know, uh, with, with, with hiking up in Colorado or something, you know, you connect with that. But you've got your own stuff, you know. And I think some, some songs are written um, to draw a lot of people in. And some are just written as authentic um, notes 
or an authentic journal entry about something I don't want to forget. I want to bring it back up and celebrate it. And that's kind of what this song is. Some songs are like that. Some songs have a big, broad, universal meaning, which is lovely, too. And that's why I'm so glad that we've got lots of songwriters, lots of songs written and lots of songs yet to be written that, uh, that do lots of different things. So there we have it. That was 1987 from Keys to My Head, our third song on the album, third episode in this series. Um, if you want to check out any of my music, um, stream uh, my music or, or check out my lyrics or anything, you can find all of that at scottsimpsonmusic.com. Uh, the other thing you'll find there is my new band, Nana Papa. Um, I'm we're we're releasing this this Monday. Our our first um, single is coming out. Uh, Tell the truth. And uh, Nana Papa is is uh, we're we're a, uh, we're making music for kids and the adults who love them. So what we're trying to do is make a make some some kids music that's not just stuff that that parents and grandparents can't stand to listen to. Stuff that's written for them as well, okay? Uh, some of them are teaching songs. Tell the truth, obviously, you know, kind of a teaching song. But lots of fun. I'm super excited about it. I hope you'll check that out as well. Thank you for joining me so much um, on this uh, with my podcast. Uh, we're, we're closing in on our the end of our second year uh, when we get to, to August Um and uh, it's been just a wonderful journey, and I, I, it looks to me like it's going to go on, um, just like um, the song says, uh, goes on like this, uh, goes on and on as far as I can see. Uh, so it's been uh, wonderful and continues to be wonderful for me. And as long as it's uh, worthwhile for you, I, uh, I will continue doing it. I appreciate having some folks tuning in and giving a listen. So stay tuned and be well.